I, I suppose the, the first thing, you, you, you were one of the cardinal electors who, who took part in the, the recent conclave that elected Pope Francis. What would be your impressions of uh, his, his papacy so far in these early months? Uh, I'll go back to the conclave uh, which elected him, which was a very moving and solemn moment. Um, you've been to the Sistine Chapel mm. perhaps and uh, have seen that marvelous uh, uh, fresco of uh, Michelangelo, the Christ the Judge, which we looked at as every time every time we went up to cast our ballot and had to swear that this was the person before God we thought would be the best Pope. Um, and um, it was a real moment of joy when we were able to greet him and uh, pledge our obedience and. Uh, hear him ask for our prayers and promise that. Um, uh, since then I have only had one occasion just past this past week to uh, visit with him personally, so I have the same access to impressions as most other people, I suppose, uh, reading uh, copies of his talks and uh, watching videos of his audiences. and. Uh, um, I think he's made a very strong impression on people throughout the world, uh, an impression that is, um, uh, of course, um, uh, transmitted through various uh, various types of media, and um, uh, he, he strikes me as uh, not being afraid of being Pope. Mm. Um, I'm not going to say whether he likes it or not, that's something you'd have to ask him. But uh, he strikes me also as, I think uh, uh, it must be true of every pope, uh, not wanting to pretend to be some other pope. Mm, sure. So uh, to be his own person, to uh, he has a long experience as a priest and bishop, uh, so he, what he does, I think, uh, comes to him normally in that sense. The Pope is a bishop of Rome and uh, pastor of the Universal Church, and he's called. And so um, he uh, he is himself. He shows that very much. I think he uh, speaks off the cuff at times and uh, uh, embraces kids that you know that want to come up and hang on him and. Uh, so forth. So, um, but he has made a strong impression. Um, for his goodness, I think, is his reminders to the church and to the world about the poor, about uh, people who uh, are easily forgotten or put aside out of our line of vision. It's a terrific thing. We're all touched, I think, and moved personally to examine our own consciences in that regard. I would say if there's one thing uh, that um, gives me a little trouble, and here I don't want to be, be media bashing in this sense, but uh, I think there is a tendency, maybe it's natural, uh, no, sometimes I think it's uh, either mistaken or malicious or some way in between, but there's a tendency, I think, to say, to look at everything he does in contrast to Pope Benedict or to Pope John Paul, uh, or both, uh, and try to make a, make a story out of that. Uh, I think that what he does is not, he does not meditate on trying to be different. He is himself. Mm -hmm. Every pope is different. Uh, so, uh, to uh, what I'm trying to get at is a certain tendency that I find in some of the media presentations is, uh, well, now we have a pope who does this, and he's contradicting what the previous pope did, or he's turning things into a different, a different story, and so forth. Uh, I think that's uh, way overdone, mm -hmm. and. Um, uh, I would say, uh, ultimately, makes the Pope um, perhaps uh, 
uh, less a sign of unity than a sign of division, which he is not. And so I mention it as in answer to your question, uh, not to take anything away from what I think is what I command by it is done so admirably and has it assumed a huge new role that as a, one of his cardinal lectures I could hardly imagine uh, doing myself. Mm. So uh, that just increases my admiration for him and my he's certain he is certainly in my prayers and uh, take the opportunity to say to whoever is hears about my remarks or watches them, uh, he never fails to ask for our prayers. So let's give them to him.